Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to be sharing with you one simple trick that I learned at my time whilst I was a, a big head office retailer in the buying function and it's something which I've taken and I've applied to my own business. I wish it was something that I focused on earlier. I wish it was something I thought about a bit more earlier but during my process being a full-time reseller and running my own business this is something that I've taken and I've seen drastic improvements in my business because of it. So one simple trick, I'm gonna provide you with three examples of how I've benefited from it, so here it is. Now in business, in, when it comes to retail, there's something that's focused on a lot when you're in a small business or whether you're in big business. And that thing is AUR or ASP. AUR, average unit retail. You're selling something out, well it's the average retail price it goes out at. Also called ASP, average selling price. But honestly, it sounds basic. It sounds like I'm telling you to suck eggs, but it's, I wish it was something that I focused on when I first started out working for myself. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how I've benefited from that. Um, and the examples are going to be from Amazon, for eBay, and for my time working in big head office retailers. So, without further ado, here they are. So, number one, my eBay example. Now, I think a lot of people that start out reselling, you tune into the people such as Nick Hills, who's absolutely fantastic, Zaheer Malik, he's, he's doing the same thing, uh, Ben Fitzpatrick, and for the majority of their business, they go out to, for example, car boot sales, jumble sales, places like that, and they pick up stock from people that they just can't be bothered to sell themselves. So they'll go in, they'll pick them up. Um, this is something that I did, and it's how I started. It's how a lot of people start. Um, so you go to boot sales, and I was going around, and I was picking up the the usual, the usual tact to to coin the phrase from uh, Mr. Hills. Um, but the usual, you know, the usual bits and bobs that you pick up, you pick them up very cheap. You sell them on, you make a small margin. So I was picking up the board game. So you, say you spend a pound on a board game, and then you would sell it on for say ten, for example. Uh, after all said and done, you probably pocket about two, three pounds worth of profit, which you think is quite nice. But when you factor into the grand scheme of things and working for yourself, it's all about time. It's all about time management. So if I go out, I could buy 10 board games for a pound, sell them all for 10 pound each um, and pick up, you know, one pound, two pound worth of profit for each of them. So I may make 10 or 20 pound off of, you know, 10 board games or whatever it is. Um, but when you think about it and you factor your time factor into it to say, I went out, I went and sourced these. I took them back home, I took photos of them, I listed them on eBay, uh, and then I had to ship them out to the customer. And when you look at all of that in aggregate, you've probably valued your own time at less than minimum wage, far less than minimum wage. Whereas the, another time I went out, I went to a car boot sale, I was just looking around. I think I was selling things at the time, so uh, I wasn't actually out hunting, but I had a little look around. I saw a KitchenAid blender. So I thought, KitchenAid, that's a very reputable brand, so I went and had a look. It cost me £12, and I thought, Phew, £12 is probably a little bit too much compared to what I would normally like to spend in this sort of starting out, messing around, seeing if I can make some profit buying a selling product. Anyway, I forked out the £12 for it, ended up selling that product within probably about a week for £60. So after all was said and done, I made about £46 profit, which is fantastic. And if you count it, if you factor in all the time that it takes you to, to source it, to pack it, to ship it, uh, I've only touched one product. I picked one product up. I've listed one product and I've sold one product. So at the end of the day, after all was said and done, my time was far, far better used buying that blender than it was buying the 20 board games or so, or so that I bought. They still take a long time to sell. You still have to list them all. Example number two, um, for example, if you buy them from Amazon, if you buy a product for Amazon, so if you're doing a bit of retail arbitrage, you're going to a shop, seeing how stuff's cheaper, undervalued, pick it up, sell it on for a profit. I was buying something called uh, an Astro Ball from B&M and I sold it for a very long time just because the, the price was like consistent. I knew I could always make a decent margin off it, but I was buying, it wasn't that decent a margin either, but I was buying it for five or I was selling it for a tenner. Similar case to sort of the um, the eBay side. Maybe I was making a couple of quid on it after it was all said and done with shipping and packaging. So that's fine. Um, but then when you start taking your attention and moving on to the higher priced items, so I remember buying, I bought a, a, quite a few printers quite recently, £40 it cost me to buy the printers. So I, I bought 20 of those uh, and ended up shifting them on for £67 each. Now on each product I've made £12 a unit. Now if I've made £12 a unit on each product, I've sold 20 of them, or I could buy 20 of these Astro Balls make a couple of quid. The, the amount of profit that you make after all is said and done is just so, so much different. And the time I've invested was so much better used buying those higher priced items 
So regardless of what the margin is that I make on the product, whether it's 20% here, I will happily take a smaller percentage margin on each product. If I know that the, the cash margin I'm gonna make is higher when you factor in the amount of time I've had to take to go and process that stock. Now, example number three is um, when, you, when I was working in a big retailer. So big retailers, um, in the buying function of a big company, their role is you work with and you negotiate with your suppliers. After that, you then price the products yourself and you also work through how you're going to market them. Now, generally, the we would always try to push the higher product. Now, the idea is when you work in big retail, um, and this is going to apply for any small businesses, um, anybody who's reselling as a job, um, you need to promote the best, sell the rest. So for example, if I was looking to sell a PC computer, for example, I would be going out saying this is the highest spec gaming laptop and for your money you get X amount, it's really good, it's great value. Now, chances are I'd sell very few of them in comparison to the stuff which is sort of that, you know, that, that mainstream high volume product. But the fact that I've pushed the higher one made the customer think, do I wanna go and buy that more expensive one? They might still end up settling on the cheaper product, but the fact is you will slowly increase your average unit retail. Now, if you're working in a big head office environment, you have to factor in to think, I've got staff on the ground. There's there's stores that have got, each each man has to take that time to go and pick that product and, and uh, give it to the customer or process each each payment, each purchase. Now, if you're pushing the higher products with the higher with the higher cash margin, there might be a smaller percentage margin, but you know that you're going to benefit more in terms of the time that everyone's invested in selling it. That that is my one trick. It's not difficult. I'm probably teaching you to suck eggs, but it's something that I wish I thought it, I kept in mind when I started out. And focusing more on the higher price products has made me propel my business from turning over 123 grand in the first year to quarter of a million in the second year. It's because I've had to factor in my time. Now, I have not particularly had any more time to play with, but without the higher price products, I'd still be sat around that, you know, I maybe would slightly got to like 200,000 or something like that, but pushing those higher price products really made a step change into my business. So that's my recommendation. Focus on the higher price products and you will definitely benefit. So just to summarize, time is the biggest factor. When you work for yourself, factor in your time and everything you do. If you're not focusing on turning stuff around fast, and aiming for the stuff that's going to be most beneficial for the time you put out there, then you're probably undervaluing your own time. I value my time quite highly. I'm quite uh, strict in my diary. I'm strict in the way that I process things. I set short time frames for how I do stuff. It's very important. So if you're focusing on the higher price stuff, you know that you're going to benefit more in the long run. Now, I'm not saying stop buying these bread and butter items. So if you've got something a little niche that works for you, you know it works, you might not be making the most on it, you still need to keep these things churning over. Because if you start focusing on the higher stuff, there's higher risk involved, you've got more capital tied up in it. But the point is you need to keep a, a wide array of stuff that you're selling, different price points, stuff that moves quick, stuff that moves slow, so you keep the sales coming. But if you focus on pushing those higher price products, you're gonna gain more benefit for your time and at the end of the day, you're going to make more money, which is the whole reason we're in this in this game. So that's the view, basically. Work on your business, not in your business. You can keep treading water, doing the same thing again and again, or you can try and make this step change. It's a small tweak, but at the end of the day, it will make a big impact to your business. So that's my advice. So here you go, guys. It's a short video. Thanks for watching. It's a really basic piece of advice, but it's something that you really need to keep in mind and keep cognizant about. Uh, and if this is something that I would have been thinking about when I first started my own business, I feel like I would have had more success, faster, quicker growth. So this is me passing my advice on to you. Go for the higher price products. There's more risk involved, but there's more reward in terms of the time you invest to sell it. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, like, subscribe, and I'll bring some more little tidbits of information to you in the future. Thanks.